Trezor versus Ledger. Which one is going to give you the better experience and will be the better choice for your Bitcoin? Hi, my name is Darren. I've helped thousands of people use Bitcoin. In today's video, I'm going to be comparing the setup of a Ledger versus a Trezor side by side so you can choose which one is right for you. We're going to cover the unboxing, the setup of the wallets, what you need, my opinion on them, what I recommend, and along the way, give you some tips on how to use them and set them up properly. If you don't know what a Ledger and Trezor do, they are Bitcoin hardware wallets or keys to allow you to store Bitcoin. These two are the most prominent, easy to get wallets in the industry, been around for a long time. Both Ledger and Trezor have multiple different models you can purchase. I'm gonna be comparing their most basic models, the Ledger Nano S Plus and the Trezor Safe 3. Now where you get them is very important here. I purchased my Ledger on Amazon and you can see that there has been some tampering with this package. Um, you do not wanna see any marks evidence of someone getting into this. Because as it was ho hosted with a third party, the ledger may have been tampered with. Um, as you can see on the Trezor, there's actually tamper-proof evidencing on the Trezor. So we can ensure that it was never tampered with or anything like that. The, my recommendation is always purchase these directly from the vendor. I know that I shouldn't have purchased it from Amazon, the ledger from Amazon, but I did just because it was cheap and convenient to create this video. Both models will come with uh, the device itself. And just right off the bat, I do like the ledger. It's actually metal, comes in multiple different colors. Uh, the Trezor is just pretty much an upgrade to their old model, is metal on the back. Both require buttons and don't have touch screen. Both will be USB-C when you plug it into a computer. Both come with USB-C cable, instructions on how to get started, and seed words card. And this is where you're gonna store that seed phrase or backup to your wallet. Ledger is 24 words and you cannot change that. And the Trezor is 12 words. On previous models, you were able to change the amount on a Trezor uh, to 18 or 24. To use both of these apps, we will need both Ledger Live and Trezor Suite. This is the software created by these companies in order to set up the device. So to do that, we are going to follow the links provided in the Getting Started Guide. It's very important to download them directly from their website. We don't wanna download this from an app store. We don't want to download this from another site. You want it directly from their website to ensure no middleman has gone through it. What you do next, uh, for the Ledger, you actually don't need the Ledger Live until your Ledger is completely set up. For the Trezor, you're going to need it instantly. Now, both will walk you through the warnings, initial setup, terms of service. Now, to select on the Ledger, you're going to hold and click both buttons at the same time to press select and just move back and forth with each one. And actually, the Trezor does the exact same thing, so you're going to um, hold both buttons to confirm. The Ledger brings you to a pin right away to set. Heading to the Trezor now, the first step on a Trezor is to update the firmware. You can actually update this to Bitcoin only, which I really like and I should have done. I just skipped that. Then we'll bring you to the backup section of the seed words. Trezor does a good job of letting you know what the seed words are and how to store them properly. You're going to create a recovery seed. These are those 12 words we talked about earlier. You're never going to take a picture of them or have a digital copy of them and you're going to store this and never share it with anyone. It is stored on your device, but keeping a backup of it is important. If this was ever lost, smashed, or destroyed, this is how you would recover your funds. So I'll then walk you through the backup on the Trezor. We're gonna do it side by side with the ledger. Once you put your pin in, it will get you to write your 24 words down and the Trezor will do the same. So it will show your words on your device as you go through it. You're gonna go through this slowly do not make a mistake. You can do it in capitals or lowercase, does not matter. This is part of a 2400 word list. And these will all be randomly generated specifically for you. Never ever want to put this online again. Now, once, once you have written down your seed words, it'll actually run you through a test to ensure you've wrote down each word properly. So you're on the ledger, you're gonna choose which one it is um, and then same with the Trezor. Once you've confirmed your words, um, you are now set up on the ledger. Next step would be on a Trezor to put a pin in. This is optional on a Trezor, but definitely recommend it. If anyone was ever to get access to this, they could have access to sign with your Trezor if you don't have a pin on it. You can set the pin anywhere from four to uh, 
believe 18 characters just like the ledger so next step is to head over to ledger live on your ledger now this is specifically for the ledger they have apps in order to use specific coins so if you want to use bitcoin you're gonna to have to download and install the bitcoin app to use bitcoin you're just going to confirm it on your device and any and anytime you want to use bitcoin you're going to have to select that bitcoin app with on, on your ledger until it says bitcoin is ready to do transactions um, share X pubs with that ledger. Heading back to the Trezor, um, we're gonna activate coins after you put in your pin. Ideally, you've just created the Bitcoin only firmware and you can edit the name, change the home screen. There are just some bonuses on that. Uh, we're gonna access Trezor Suite. This brings up the wallet type. Now standard is without a passphrase and passphrase is essentially that 25th word. So if you wanna add any word, any phrase on top of your already existing seed phrase, that is what a passphrase is. Now, if you ever lost this, forgot it, have a character wrong, there's no way to recover your funds. So I definitely recommend turning off that passphrase. That will provide you less confusion moving forward if you mistakenly create a passphrase and put funds into that passphrase wallet. Now, both of your devices are set up, ready to use, ready to deposit, um, or share XPUBs, create a multi-sig, do whatever you want with these wallets, and that's all you'll need to do. So ultimately, I think both of these devices are good tools and it really depends on how you're going to use them if I recommend them or not. Let's start with the pros and cons first. So what I like about the Trezor is the ease of use getting started. You don't even need to plug this into Ledger Live, install anything to set up and get your seed words right away. It has lots of compatibility across many Bitcoin apps and wallets in the industry. Now for the Trezor, I like the Bitcoin only software that you can download in this device. When you are setting it up, it gives you the option for a passphrase wallet. It even gives you a warning about creating your seed phrase, what it is, how to recover it, providing you a lot more information than Ledger did just on this tiny screen. Trezor will take you a bit longer to set up and it relies on Trezor Suite to get started. So you have to download that program to use this device. Now the cons about the Ledger, I noticed the packaging didn't have as much tamper-proof evidence features as a Trezor did. So I don't feel as comfortable using it as it almost looks like it was tampered with. Again, you don't need to rely on Ledger Live to set this up, but you do have to rely on Ledger Live to install the Bitcoin app if you want to use Bitcoin on this device. So that does require you to download and install that. There's also been a lot of bad press for Ledger. One of the things they prompt you to do right away when you install Ledger Live is to join the, the recovery service. And then this recovery service is you're going to be sharing parts of your seed with Ledger, another company. Um, if you are ever to lose this device and lose your seed phrase, they can back it up for you. This is an optional opt-in thing um, that definitely do not recommend as you're going to be sharing your seed phrases with other companies and they could collude to take it. And this is just a total no-go as anybody had a seed phrase could move your Bitcoin. And they've also had the news of people extracting seed phrases from other smart contracts that they've built with Ledger on different apps that are installed in this. Now, from my knowledge, this doesn't affect any Bitcoin and no Bitcoin's been ever taken from this. Um, it's only if you're playing around with different apps that are installed in this device that just, just doesn't make you sleep any better at night <laughs> knowing that all your Bitcoin is stored on here with all those bad, with all that bad press. Now, both of these I think are great tools when used with like a multi-signature, when used with other wallet software, they can still generate keys for you. They're great tools for you to learn and store Bitcoin on. Do your research and decide which one's gonna work best for you. Personally, I kind of like the Trezor if you're a beginner because it does take you through some other features of warning you about the seed phrases and setting it up. If you like this video, I got other videos on how to use Bitcoin, how to store Bitcoin. If you have any other questions, please let me know and uh, thanks for watching.